If you thought the two lost episodes of Teletubbies were bad enough, guess again. I was in a second-hand shop with my mom, and I went to the kids' DVD section. As I was looking on the shelves, I found a very familiar DVD, Teletubbies. I was surprised and happy I found such a rare find. This DVD's title was, Teletubbies, Obstacle Course and Other Stories. The cover depicted the Teletubbies in a pink background with Dipsy close to the cover, while the other Teletubbies are inches away from him. I then went to find my mom to show her. Once I found her, I showed her the DVD. It was only $8 and I had enough money to get it. As I got home, my mom told me that she will be at work until 7 p.m. Just then, I realized I should watch my new DVD. Before I watched the DVD, I looked at the episode list on the back cover. The episodes were, Obstacle Course, The Lay Rhymes, Jack in the Box, Blackberry Picking, The Very Proud Crown, and a very unusual title for a Teletubbies episode, Dreams. An episode about dreams? I thought. Sounds interesting, to be honest. I inserted the disc in the DVD player. It opened with the warning screen, the regular ABC DVD logo and ABC for Kids logo as usual. It then took me to the DVD menu. The menu featured the Teletubbies outside of Teletubby Land from the episode Blackberry Picking, with texts in their television screens. On Lala's, it said Play All. On Dipsy's, it said Episode Selection. On Tinky Winkies, it featured the ABC Lissages curve with web link under it. And on Pose, it featured subtitles. I thought that menu was really creative. I am impressed. I spoke. I pressed play all, and I watched through the first four episodes. However, the last episode was very messed up. The intro was normal, but when the voice trumpet appeared after the Teletubbies ran away, it said. Sweet dreams are made of this, but nightmares also made of this too. What was that? I questioned myself. It was rather weird of the voice trumpet to say that. The first segment started, and it featured Dipsy sitting at the table. His face was planted on the table, and he was looking away. At that moment, he lifted his head up and began to sob quietly. His sobs didn't sound very cartoony, instead, they sounded realistic. As Dipsy cried, the Nunu watched him, not even caring about what's happening and looking at the camera. Dipsy began sobbing louder, and tears began coming out of his eyes. I never saw a Teletubby cry like that or shed a realistic tear before. However, I felt a bit bad for Dipsy. As Dipsy continued crying, the narrator said. One day, in Teletubby land, Dipsy was depressed. Dipsy then finally stopped crying and said. Dipsy, depressed. However, he started crying again. Even though I felt bad for Dipsy in this scene, his crying was getting very annoying. At that moment, the windmill began spinning. Dipsy stopped crying and said, Uh oh! in his happy tone and ran out of the house. The Teletubbies caught up for a TV event and Poe was chosen for the TV event. The TV event was about two twin girls named Kayla and Larissa, who are about six to seven years old. Kayla, the younger twin, did a drawing of what her dream looked like, which is about going to the beach with her family. And Larissa, the older twin, did a drawing too. But instead of a dream, it was a nightmare she had, the drawing consisted of a plane crash. She even stated that she was in that plane. What? Why would she mention that in a preschooler's show? I asked in shock. Then, the girls went to bed and fell asleep. Larissa hoped for a better dream when she slept tonight. The TV event ended, but played for a second time. It then cut to the second segment. It showed a shot of the house. Inside of the house, Dipsy was walking to his bed and yawned. One day, in Teletubby land, Dipsy is tired and is going to have a dream. Dipsy tired and dream. Dipsy responded. He then got in his bed and fell fast asleep. Good night, Dipsy. The narrator said. As Dipsy fell asleep, he started dreaming. At first, a shadow then cast through the window and into the house, and the entire house glowed dark red. The shadow was in the shape of a ritual, and some very familiar shadowy figures emerged out of it. After 40 seconds, Dipsy woke up. Dipsy yawned and noticed that the house is dark red. Why house red? Dipsy asked in a worried tone. Dipsy went to look all over Teletubby land to see what was going on. The narrator ordered. Dipsy complied and exited the house. 
As he went outside, he noticed the sky was mixed with black and red, and he heard faint laughter. Dipsy began to get scared, but he put on a brave face to look for the other Teletubbies. Searching all over Teletubby land, Dipsy found Tinky Winky who was facing away, sitting next to a bush. Dipsy found Tinky Winky. The narrator said. Dipsy walked up towards Tinky Winky and reached out his hand to touch him if he was okay. Tinky Winky was crying, but refused to turn around. Tinky Winky? Okay. Dipsy asked Tinky Winky, as he slowly held his hand towards his back. Once Dipsy touched Tinky Winky, the latter turned around, and he looked really messed up. Tinky Winky had an alien-like appearance with large hollow black eyes, an alien-like mouth in the shape of an O with razor-sharp teeth around it and his fur is now a cross between dark purple and black. Tinky Winky snarled loudly at Dipsy. Dipsy let out a yell in horror and fell back in shock and ran away. Dipsy found Lala and warned her that Tinky Winky is supposedly possessed. However, Lala was also crying, leaning against her ball. Dipsy felt touched seeing her sobbing. He then reached his hand out towards her. Lala, okay? Dipsy asked in concern. When Lala turned around, her face was pale white, her eyes were empty and she was crying small drops of blood. She hissed at Dipsy in a sinister way. Dipsy fell back in shock again, letting out a scared yell. He got back on his feet and ran away to look for Poe. Dipsy found Poe, sitting beside a rabbit burrow. Like earlier before, Poe was facing away and crying. He warned Poe that Tinky Winky and Lala were supposedly possessed. Oh, Tinky Winky and Lala possessed. Poe didn't listen and continued crying. Okay. Dipsy asked in concern. He reached his hand out towards Poe's shoulder, but she was also demonic. Poe's appearance was messed up, her fur was in a darker red, her eyes were glowing red and her circular antenna was even in the shape of a ritual. Oh no! Dipsy shouted in horror. Oh no, Tinky Winky, La La and Poe are possessed. The narrator said in shock, with actual emotion. Run away! Dipsy shouted. Dipsy then ran all over Teletubby Land to find the house. At that moment, two familiar faces ran in front of him. In front of him, the scary line and Darth Tubby, from Galactic Battles, were blocking his way. Greeny, greeny, greeny. Darth Tubby said. You're not gonna get away with my evil plot. When you and your friends were asleep, we poured this potion into their mouths, but we forgot to pour it into you. The scary line said. Darth Tubby held up a blood red potion. This is the potion I created. Now, they are bloodthirsty demons. What? Dipsy exclaimed. Darth Tubby then said. We are going to finish your Teletubby life, slowly and clean. Dipsy then ran towards the house to hide. Behind him, Tinky Winky, Lala and Poe chased him. Once Dipsy got into the house, he realized the Nunu was possessed too. The Nunu was now a giant, monstrous robot with realistic skin, his eyes were bloodshot and he had small patches of blood around him. Oh no! Not you do! Dipsy yelled. Dipsy then ran to the back doors, but once he was about to take the last step outside, the Nunu extended his nozzle and grabbed Dipsy by the ankle. Dipsy screamed as the Nunu pulled him towards him. Behind the Nunu, the other Teletubbies walked up. Darth Tubby and the scary line did too. Dipsy looked at the group, his vision blurred from tears. Ah! Uh. Oh! Dipsy moaned weakly. Darth Tubby then said, Are you ready to become a demon green Teletubby? No! Dipsy wheezed, sobbing for a bit. Dipsy sobbed, wishing for mercy. His Teletubby days were coming to an end. Teletubby land was currently being ran by two psychopaths and there is nothing he can do about it. Darth Tubby then poured the potion into the scary line's throat. The scary line grinned sinisterly with his teeth. Through his teeth, he said. It's time to turn Teletubby land into Teletubby land. The line then bit Dipsy's leg and the potion started absorbing into his skin, as if it were a needle injecting into somebody's body. Darth Tubby laughed like crazy as the scary line kept biting into his leg. Dipsy let out a blood-curdling scream as the line was grinding his teeth into his leg. He continued screaming and screaming and screaming as more of the potion started flowing through his body. 
At that moment, the line then pulled his teeth away from his victim's leg. At that moment, Dipsy started having a headache. He realized his hands were glowing dark green, and he realized he was being mutated. Dipsy's body began forming into a thin and bony figure, his skin became gray, his eyes started glowing red, he grew thousands of teeth and his fur started to grow scales. Dipsy was shocked to see his mutated build. He looked at his mutated friends, Tinky Winky, Lala and Poe, and realized if his friends were mutated, he had to be part of them. Yeah. Darth Tubby and the scary line laughed evilly as the now called Tele Demons formed a group. At that moment, Dipsy, looking normal, woke up in bed, screaming. He darted his eyes back and forth and realized this entire ordeal was just a nightmare he had. Dipsy sighed in relief and went back to sleep. The segment ended, and the Tubby Bye Bye scene looked normal. However, instead of the usual ending theme, a lullaby with a creepy filter played throughout the entire scene. Once it showed the Ragdoll and BBC logos after the credits played, the former was in a mix of red and black, while the latter had blood dripping under it. And the same red-tinted ABC DVD logo appeared, but it was more messed up, it showed the Teletubbies' faces, faintly seen through the background. It took me back to the main menu, and at the right time, my mom and dad came home. I ran outside and told my parents about the episode on the DVD. I showed them the footage, and they believed me. The only evidence I could show you is some photos I managed to capture before my mom burnt the entire DVD. I couldn't sleep for the entire night, the episode keeps going back to haunt me all night. Who makes episodes of preschoolers shows with such mature and unusual titles? Who knows?